knowledge of God. Because of your office, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 29, God said, let's make man amen, in our image. You need to know what that is. You need a particular knowledge, a set, a particular set of knowledge to understand what it is to be made in the image of God. Amen? That's the first part. This one deals with binge. God didn't just say, no, let's make man in our image and leave him there. After he made the, he decided to make the man in his image and he made it, he said, let's give this man that I made in my image, amen, purpose or assignment. He said, let's give this man now authority. Let's give him dominion. So he made a man that he wanted to reflect exactly him. And then he made this man, he said, I want this man to have authority and power. So let's give this man dominion. So you need to understand what is dominion, what is power. And you need the knowledge or the know-how that allows you to understand amen, what that is. Not kind of, you absolutely need to understand and say, what it is to be made in the image, what it is to have dominion. That word dominion could mean dominate. Dominate. He said, let's give him dominance. And then the last part of, of the depiction he gave him, he said, he was very specific. A God is very specific. He said, I want to drop dominion in some particular place. He said, over the earth. He said, over the earth, I wanted to dominate the earth. And in the year, I wanted to dominate the year, the water, and the things in it. Except he didn't put human beings in. You're not allowed to dominate another human being. If you get some time, read the verse. He said, the water and the things coming out of the water, the creeping things, and the things in the air that fly, and the things that are on the land. The only thing you were not allowed to dominate was each other. Those are not part of the equation. So there was to be your image, and you need to have knowledge that show you not kind of where your mother say, or your community, or your culture. No, what, 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 what did God say my image is like? He said, made in my image. What does my image mean? To know this, you need to know God. You cannot know God's um, image if you don't know God, as you'll see, I'll show you in, in the scripture. Amen? And you cannot understand dominion if you don't understand the knowledge, or how it's set up, or how it works. And then the last thing you need to understand, jurisdiction. I live in Toronto, Canada. And if, we, if, if, if a police officer or, or you know, have, have jurisdiction, let's say in Dome or Toronto, and he was to go to Montreal, his authority doesn't work in Montreal. It only worked within the jurisdiction that he was assigned to, that he was qualified to be in. Your dominion do have limitation. It's only good on the earth and the, and the spectrum and the range that he put in the water and the air and so forth. Not in heaven. That is not the first part of it. Amen. Only your kingdomship give you, give you, give you um, authority in the heaven per, uh, perspective. That's a different component. Christians have this one. But you got the basic one that was given. I'm speaking it to all humanity, not just the church. You are given dominion over the earth and the water and the air. You need to have knowledge and you are quite clear. Now, kind of understand that process. So we're going to talk about that. And not just, there's one thing to know something. There's another thing to retain it. And then to use it. It's when God will tell Adam, amen, I want you to guard it, I don't want you to keep it, and then I want you to use it, I want you to tend it. Tend it like stoke in a fire. I need to engage with it. It's like the old saying, or, or, or the normal saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. Or anything that doesn't get used, it just stops working, it sees up. So your, your, any, whether it's your beanship, whether it's your authority, or the area, the, the sphere where you're working on, you need to use it. It's not really cool. what makes us uh, stop retaining it or, or, or lost it. You don't use it often enough. You don't walk in the image often enough. You don't walk in authority often enough. And you don't operate over the space you're supposed to, or the environment or the area you're supposed to operate effectively or cons consistently. You need to do it. God himself will evaluate you. And if you want to be sharp, you need to operate. Anyway, I want to do a quick little recap from what we talked about last week. I jumped straight into the word. Let's continue this message. I'm going to finish it up this week or next week. We have looked at Romans chapter 1, and I'll just read one verse, verse 28. And I'm reading here from the NIV. And the Lord said, Furthermore, since they did not think it's worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, He gave them over to a depraved mind, a dysfunctional mind, to do, amen, what ought to not to be done. There's some things you're not supposed to do because it erodes or work against the image, your identity. There are some things, if you keep doing it, it will work against your very identity. 
There are some things that are not to be done because it works directly against your authority, your delegated authority that was delegated uh, upon you. It undermines it. It weakens it. You understand this? There are some things the Bible said, because they didn't think it was worthwhile retaining the knowledge of God, he said, okay, I'm going to give you a mind, you see, that, that you're trying to push you, that will make you work against your own infrastructure. Against your own infrastructure. There's some things you're not supposed to be due because it works against your jurisdiction. Now, when you try to exercise authority in that area, it won't recognize you. And this is what a depraved mind is. It's like, it's like a collapsed mind, a mind that doesn't understand how it should work. It's a mind that's lacking certain things, certain essence, certain essential. And God said, because they didn't think it was worthwhile to retain me and retain the knowledge I give them, their mind starts to collapse. It doesn't function the way how it should. Wholesome. Knowing the things it ought to be doing. It starts to doing things amen, contrary to their own position, their own office, their own environment. Hence the world we're living in. The Bible said, they did not think it was worthwhile. Amen. To retain the knowledge of God. Later on, as you'll see, he said, as a result, they start to hurt their own what? Body. He said, as a result, they start to injure their own self in this process as they start to operate in this way. In Jesus' name. I want to show you a verse. Verse 27. Actually, let's be quick. For the same chapter, verse 26 and 27 says. Romans chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. So still continue there. And I hear. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural relationships for unnatural, unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relationship with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men commit indecent act with other men and, amen, and receive in themselves the due penalty for their perversion. In the Amna of the Bible said, they injure themselves. You see, when you do not operate according to your makeup, how you're supposed to operate according to your design, you end up injuring the design. Not even nobody doing it to you. You do it to yourself. He said, in so doing, they bring forth penalty upon themselves. Injuring themselves. This world will be tough enough. Think of this world... Like a great creek or a river you're trying to cross, it will be challenging enough. You don't, it doesn't, you make it so much worse when you're doing things that you're injuring yourself in the process. Life will have plenty of challenge that will make it quite challenging already. Amen? It will have plenty of challenge that you don't need to look for ways to injure yourself. You'll be enough mess up, you will make naturally that mess things up. But when we fail to retain the knowledge of God, you'll find this will be your story. This will be a testimony. I do things contrary to my makeup, my image. I don't know who I am, I'm lost. I weaken my own position of beingship I'm talking here. I do things contrary to my authority. As a result, I can't use it when I want to or in the way that I need to use it. I do things against my own environment. The Bible says, my own hands, you're the one taking the environment support that injures my environment. And the unfortunate thing for humanity, why is you are doing all that to yourself? You have, amen, an extraordinary enemy trying to take you out at the same time. You just help him with this process. All you just do when you weaken yourself, amen. You just make it a little easier. 
you make it a little easier for his work to be done. May God have mercy. So we had looked at that in Romans when we look at chapter 1, verse 28 to 21. They did not retain the knowledge of God and the danger of that. And then we had also looked at 8 through Romans chapter 1, verse 18 and 25. They exchange the knowledge of God. Because when you lose the knowledge of God, you lose the knowledge of who? You. Because you are made directly like Him, in the image of Him. So when you lose the knowledge of God, you have definitely lose your personal knowledge. That's why so many people are always comparing themselves with other people or looking to other people to define them. Tell me who I am. If, you know, I am black because I was born with this kind of body. That will not make you who you are. I'm oriental because I was born in the, Orient, in, in, in the Middle East or, or the Far East. No, no. You're looking for things to depict you, to tell you your identity because you have lost your original knowledge so you kind of look around and go, I must be like one of them. The only challenge is you're unique. You are extremely unique, meaning there's nobody else like you. So for you to get the knowledge of you, you need in it, the ultimate unique being. We look at it, the Bible said they exchange the knowledge of God, the Creator, for created things. So they start to find identity instead of the one that created them, in things that he creates. So they start looking around and like, well, God created this, so maybe I'm like that. Maybe I'm like the cat, or, or, or I'm like the dog, or I'm like the tree, or I'm like the business. God created. So they start giving themselves identity according to what the Creator created for them to manage. The things they were supposed to manage and have dominion, they start to label themselves after it to give themselves so called purpose and identity. There's only one problem. The software doesn't correspond with this so-called identity that they give. Can kind of design according to that? So we have looked at the Bible said they exchange God for the things that God created. And then we look at Acts chapter 28, 26, and 27. As a result, he said, they have eyes that are always seeing and they're always looking, but the eyes can't put it in context. It doesn't see. And they have ears and they're always hearing. But it doesn't have context, they can't tell what they're hearing. And he said they have a heart that always feels, but they can't perceive. Should I believe in this? Should I believe that I'm like the tiger? Should I believe I'm a businessman? Should I believe I'm a mom or I'm a school teacher? You know, or I'm a father or a bishop? Should I believe? Say so they have a heart that doesn't know how to perceive what to believe. And for you to do anything, you have to start believing, I believe I can do this, I believe in this person, I believe in this cause. But it's a most of what they're believing. The heart can't perceive it properly. You see, once you lost your identity, every other step is wrong. Because the first step has took you off the course. So now your position is wrong. So therefore you're using your authority wrong in the wrong place. And your ability to use your heart. So he said, they have a heart, amen, but they can't perceive. The heart deals with, what should I believe? Do I understand what to believe? Should I believe in this person, in this cause? Is this the mountain I'm going to take my stand and die on? Should I go forward? Should I stay in this country? Should I get married to this person? I need to believe because everything starts with what? I believe I can do this. I believe this is the person for me. I believe this is where it should work. I believe this is a great. Everything begins with belief. But he said, they forever have a heart that cannot perceive. It no longer can put context to the moment. And they have ears, but they no longer can put context to what they hear. They're still about it. They hear it. But it can't make sense of it. And they see it, but they can't make sense of it. And they're feeling things, but they don't know if they should believe it. So he says, as a result, when we look at Isaiah of all this confusion and mixing of the process and injuring themselves, in Isaiah 5, 20 to 22, he said they start calling darkness what? Light. And they start calling good evil. The whole process becomes mixed up. But this all originates from what? Wrong identity. All the rest is just details. Wrong representation. Once your identity is skewed, immediately you're off the mark. Immediately you're no longer seeing it right. Your vantage point of change. You've become snared already. You shouldn't be surprised of the rest. The Bible said they're calling Light, darkness, darkness, light, good, evil, evil, good, sweet, bitter. 
Everything became confusing. And they start to, they, they start to put their strength in this. This is where they think that their strength comes from. They go, I am a champion of drinking and getting high. They go, I am amazing at getting high. They think these are the things to champion. Instead of championing, I am made in the image of God, as Jesus said. If you see me, you see my father. And as my father is working right now, I'm working here. They don't have those champions of image. You see, you should be a champion of what? Retaining the image of what? God. You should be a champion for a human being. Anybody see you, they should see what? God. You should be a champion because, you know, and let me put it different. You should be a champion of your species. And you are of the what? God has said, I make you a lion. Because then you could go, you know, if you were like, I'm a champion of the lions. Anybody see me, they see all the lions. Well, the scripture says in Isaiah 5, they, 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 they're boasting that they're champion of drinking and getting high. They're no longer a champion of what? The image of God. A champion of what? Dominion, the matters and the situation that they're supposed to deal with. They can champion it. A champion of what? Their environment. Or the opposite of what found it to be true. They have lost their image, lost their ability to have a dominion. Things that they were supposed to rule rules over them. The trees that they were supposed to rule master them and they are slaves to it. They are high to the tree, as Brother Miles would say. Amen. And they do subdue to their environment, beat them up instead of what? When Jesus' environment was trying to act up as he was on the boat, he could be still, he controls the environment. Now he's the same Adam, he's the second Adam made just like the first. He's just the, the first man was supposed to do this and was at point. He just knew what the first man was supposed to be doing. But the Bible said, sin is a degrading power, a devaluing power. Once sin gets into man, it neutralizes, devalues, like erase, efface his image. Efface his authority or authority. Efface. Their ability to control their environment. Man lost his way, lost his power, lost how to interface properly and interact with his environment. Thousands and thousands of years. Hence, we thank God for Jesus. For the unchurch, if you're ever wondering why Jesus, Jesus came and reconciled everything. He left that reset man into the position. Your Christians say they're born again. What does that mean? They are re, I re, became re. Let me, let, me, let me rephrase that. They are regenerated and learn how to become reacquainted with their identity, who they are, and their God. First of all, they have to be reacquainted with their God to become reacquainted with their ability, who they are, and then how to operate in their authority and how to dominate in the sphere or the area they're supposed to. This is where we stopped last week. We stopped with man lost and confused. Somebody said, well... Why, why do I need to know Jesus? Why do I need to know Jesus? Let's take a look at that. Before I get deep, a little deeper into words, let's spend a few minutes seeing why do I want to know God. Go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. The book of Hebrews, chapter 1. Hebrews, chapter 1. We use them for the most part here. I do read different Bibles. But I am reading particularly most of the time in our church, we read from the Amplified Bible. So I'm at page 14, uh, 24 and 25. Hebrews chapter 1. I want to read verse um, 2, and, 2 and 3. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. It's extremely dangerous to lose God. To fail, but you're done. Anytime you fail to retain the knowledge of God, you're done. Uh, I'll show you this process. Show me a nation that has lost the knowledge of God, and I'll show you a nation that has lost themselves. They'll, they'll do things contrary to injure the nation, or injure their body, injure their family, injure society, injure their future. Show me a man or a woman that does not retain the knowledge of God. You see, because whether you have the knowledge of God or not, you still have to make decision what? Every day. But you no longer have the appropriate reference point. You no longer have the, a proper way of putting it in context. 
Show me a man or a woman or a child that does not have the knowledge of God and I'll show you someone that do things unimaginable to themselves and those around them. No, is it because they're bad people? No. As we said, there are many nice and really good people, amen, with great intentions still create what? Hell. They said the road to hell is paved with all kind of good intentions. The problem is they don't have the proper context to deal with these moments, situations, or circumstances. So I don't care if it's a church, a government, a family, a man, a woman, a society that have failed to retain the knowledge of God. I'll show you a people, a generation, amen, a place that all the wheels come undone. All the things that hold the fabric of the man and his authority and his environment and society together dissolve without the knowledge of God. Intention. They know good intention is absolutely not enough. You need the proper context, the proper knowledge to put it together. The more a person, a society, a nation, a people retain the knowledge of God, the more powerful and more they will grow stronger and stronger and effective they will be. The opposite is so true. Too. The more a people, a society, a nation, an individual lose the knowledge of God, just watch what happens. I watch over there sometime now more and more we're taking the, the knowledge of God out of school, out of this. It terrifies me because I know what comes next. Just look at history. Show me a people, a time, a generation without the knowledge of God. And I'll show you a people out of control. They're just spinning. Spinning. Not because they're bad. Because they no longer have a center, equilibrium. They no, 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 no longer have something to pair it up against. Amen? Let's see why we need to know God. In, Roman, in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 said, But in the last days, now how do we know it's the last days? You'll find it very soon. But in the last, amen? But in the last of these days, He has spoken to us, amen? In the person, because God was talking to people long before, a true prophet, amen? To the person, amen, of a son who, whom, he, amen, whom he appointed here and lawful owner of all things. So how do we know in the last days? Because Jesus will begin to speak to us. Since he came, he was speaking and through his Holy Spirit, he keeps speaking to us. This is what, amen, activate that we know we are in the last days. When he wasn't speaking before, amen, it was not time yet of what? The last days. But the last days become activated once Jesus begins to what? Manifest it. Once he starts to manifest, we know we are in the last days. Amen? And he's appointed here a lawful owner of what? Is it of some things? The Bible says of what? All. All things. Also, amen, by and through whom he created the world. Not just the world. I know we live in one world and we think that's all there is. Amen? He created what? World. You notice the plural there? The world. Amen? And the reaches. It went out to say, and the reaches of space. Amen? And the ages of time. Amen? He may produce, build, operates, and arrange, amen, arrange them in order. Jesus said, all the worlds I'm the one created. All the space that the world exists in. I created all the time zones and the different times of these worlds. I created. Mm. You think you should know the ar that person? You think? The architect? <laughs> if I want to understand worlds, do you think I might want to know the one that what? Create worlds. If I want to understand space, do you think I might want to know the one that creates space? Or should I know past the child who live in the space but didn't create the space? Who live in the world or a world and didn't create the world? Which one do you think will be better? But the Bible said, they trade the one that created, amen, for the world that he creates. For the people and things he created inside. If I want to understand time and ages, should I know the one that created or should I know the one that's in the time? I'll go for the one that created because I'll understand the ins and outs of it. The why, how, the where. But the Bible says we trade that knowledge. We go, why do I need to know the architect? I can just 
know the people that live in limited time, limited space, one world, one age, they'll give me, they're, they're short sightedness, they'll help me. I'll draw my identity from there. I'll draw my authority from there. I'll draw the environment I'm supposed to manage from there. If I want to understand, amen, how to operate this process in order, do I look to the one that has it all in order, set it in order, or those that try to follow the order? I have two words. You can be short-sighted, near-sighted, or you can get insight and be foresighted. The one who creates it has insight and foresight. All insight only have what? They're nearsighted or short-sighted. Simply because of vantage point. Verse 3 said, is the sole expression of the glory of God. The light being, amen, the outraying, amen, or radiance of the divine. And he, and he is the perfect imprint and the very image of God, nature, unfolding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word and power. God said it's Jesus' word and power that guiding all this world and time and space and keeping it all in order. It's his word dictate and decree the limits and the expand and how far it can go and how far the water. That's so when he made the waters and the, and the ocean. He said boundaries and bad. His word. And you know the saying walk the talk? He has the power to maintain and to walk what? His words. He says he's the perfect imprint of the very image of God's nature unfolding, maintaining, guiding, and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power. When I say, when he had, amen, when he had by offering himself accomplished, amen, our cleaning, our cleansing of sin and riddance of guilt, he sat down at the right hand of the divine majesty on high. Amen. If you want to know, now I want to catch a couple of subtlety here. When they depict Jesus, let's go back in verse 3. The Bible said, He is the sole expression of the glory of God, the light being. Amen? The outrain or, or radiance of the divine. And He is the perfect, what? What's the word? Imprint. The perfect replica. Imprint. You think He loses His image? It is an imperfect. You see, to operate as a God, you see, you can operate as what's called a fallen human being, which is what we've been doing for thousands and thousands of years. It means I am one that kind of represents, but I'm not the exact one. Imprint. This is what fall, one of the things is. So that when people see us, they kind of go, well, I think he's a man and I think he's a God. I'm not quite sure what he is. And the reason is, you no longer is the perfect, or, or I'll say the exact one. Imprint. But as Jesus is the sole expression, is the exact. Is why he tells Philip and him, if you see me, you see God. My image is exact. People sometimes go, man of God, why Jesus? I go, he's the exact replica of what I come from. So if I want to know exactly who I am, I need someone who has no modification. I need someone in the perfect representation. Without change. Right. And this can give me the exact of what I'm supposed to want. Be. Perfect. I go, why Jesus? I need to know myself. I need to understand what I am. Perfect. And to do that, because of where I come from, I need the exact imprint to give me an exact depiction of what I am. Of what I am. Then as I, as I look close at him, I realize by his word and power, he built the world and the space and time and ages. I'm controlling it all. And I was given a, 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 a micro a, of that macro, a smaller world. So if he's controlling, how much word is that? All the world? You think he might have to show me how to control? My little world. My little evil. Oh, shall I do the love of Can somebody walk with me today a little bit? Not even one page. Can somebody walk with me a little bit today? Is anybody willing to walk with me for it? Can I get some companion today? You see, when I want the Lord to control my little micro little world, I go to the what? The 
the maker of world, the macro of world, and as a macro of world that control world by power amen, and words, how do I use you see, my little words and power to control my micro world? But we do, the Lord Jesus said, He said, when I come, I found the opposite to be true. Instead of them looking to the master and the creator of worlds and the one who controls the universe and the worlds and the space and time of aging by his words and power, they're looking to others who can control their world and who is not the exact alteray or the exact imprint to go, you know, you are lost and you don't know who you are. I notice you bark like a dog and you're trying to be a champion of drinking and smoking and taking drugs and you fail to manage your house and anything else. But can you give me some identity and show me how to control my home? Really? The best we can do? best we can do. The Bible says that they compare themselves among themselves. Like if that's the standard. Is that the best we can do? Look to others who are no longer the radiance of God. In the earlier church, Paul and Barnabas was in um, Antioch. And they were just doing what a God being can do. And when they see what they can do, they thought there were two gods to talk. What they call Paul he was talking the most Zeus. Um, and I forgot what they call um, Barnabas. But simply because the, what they were doing, amen, what they should have been able to do to was the stuff God can what? Do. You see, when you look to, you will come to that level. If you look to the one who is the exact image, you will get your image what recalibrated properly. If you look to those that have the wrong image or par partial image, now some of us we have partial image, you kind of look to God. The Bible says you must look, set your heart on things above and keep doing it. You must keep looking to God. Look to the author that will perfect you, will make your image perfectly correct. And keep doing it. And I said, beware of the sin that's so clever that can distract you entirely, that you stop looking. So some of us, sometimes we look at God and yet your image starts to get corrected, you start to take corrective measure, but you look away to the world too, and you get marred. So you're, you're not perfect in your image, your imprint. You see, we all give off an energy, as you said, an outer we all give off an energy. Mm -hmm. So you might, you might send out to your friends and family a little bit of God, but you send out a whole lot of crazy world too. And, and, and what we do carelessly, we look to these other people and things and go, um, and go you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to be like this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be like Michael Jordan or whatsoever. We choose another or I'll be like the bishop. I don't want to be like the bishop. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like God. He's the exact replica. The Bible says when he walked, he traveled the earth. He did not sin. What kind of sin? He never lost his image. Not even once. He never lost the exact imprint. I believe it's one of the reasons he always retained what? The power. You see, your image and your power to control your little world. You see, this is why God said, I, I told you when God, in Genesis, what, God gave man specific areas. He said, your power will only work in this area. Now, Jesus' power, scope, that's a whole different. He has worlds. Worlds. We have a particular area supposed to be your world. But one thing I know, if I am going to mourn how to have the appropriate image, I need the one or the one with the exact image of where I came from. All that I am, he must be, not partial, all of it. If I'm going to get the full range of me. If I'm going to get past the child or the first lady or any one of you to get to where I need you to have, amen, the proper view and behold, the full image of that's where you come from. So when you manifest yourself exactly in your potency, not partial, amen, comes out in its true sense. And when your image is right, amen, your word and your power should be right. Unless you're speaking against your own image. And your world should be responsive within your jurisdiction. The Bible teaches in Romans, the Bible said the old creation has been placed in whole suspended automation. 
Because it's waiting on the sons of God, the proper image beings, to be what? Revealed. So in the world, look at most of us, the environment that you're supposed to be managing, it doesn't recognize it. Because that key code doesn't work. You're bringing these false image. And then we have the, the nerves or the audacity to go, well, how come the environment doesn't respond to me? How come the people and things doesn't, you know, respond to me properly? I grew up on a farm and we had lots of dogs and animals. And like Jesus said, when the owner for the house or the shepherd come, the animals know. You'll find they draw close, they respond. But when a stranger comes, they what? They move away. For most of us, what happens? Your environment, you mean, your, your, your image, your state repels your environment. It doesn't correspond. You can't control it. I wish I had time to share some spirituality with you. Spirituality is not what you think it is. The church and all the craziness we do in there, that's not quite spirituality. We, we, we spiritual beings, can, we do get together and have to and should come together and worship and do all the other stuff. But in a simple sense, I don't have enough time to explain this part to you. We are in harmony with the Creator and the environment He creates. We don't violate that uh, principle. We are in harmony with the Creator. We can see Him, sense Him, move in alignment with Him. And the environment, the world that is controlled by His Word and His power, we also operate in that sphere simultaneously. See, if, if, if this is spirituality, or I could say, we are in, in other words, of spirituality, we are in the oneness with the one, amen, that stays in the cor correct image, amen, and manages this world accordingly. This process is spirituality. All the rest is something else, something else. But spirituality, we are in oneness with the one, with the perfect image. We don't, we don't work, he made us to be a God being, we don't try to be a horse. No, we're in one with him. And the environment, amen, that he manages by his power and his word, we don't violate that neither. So you can, this process is called spirituality, amen, or oneness, oneness, oneness. In a simple sense, the, the more intricate to you, not, not complicated, anybody trying to make it complicated, they don't quite get it, they don't quite understand it. It doesn't have enough time to to go down that path. Think of it in its simple sense. Keep it one if you can. True, you need help to do this. Amen? And maintain the one image. Anyhow. It's oneness with God in the environment. Amen. You don't want like this process of spirituality. And in a way, I sometimes find that word spirituality because it, it's subjective. It has too many movements. So I like the word oneness in that whole process there, all of it. So my suggestion when you look at Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2 and 3, because Jesus, amen, who God appoint and, and like it or not, in the days of our time, God is talking to us, the Bible said, through Jesus. This is how he's speaking. He appointed him as owner of all things. So if you want to, amen, participate in the things that he gives to you or the things that he owns, you need to find the one appointed or own it all. And go, how does this thing operate? And if you want to get the best version of you, you didn't, more money ain't going to give you the more version of you. More education, more church will not give you the best version of you. You need the exact image of the one that creates you to get the best one. Version of you. There are many going to church. Now objectively, it's true. They have the right version. But they don't experience it. They don't look to him, they're not close enough to him, amen, by their choice, to get the proper image. You'll find that sometimes they show it when they're looking at him, but sometimes they're showing something else. They're confusing the hell out of him. This problem happen because they're not beholding him properly. They're not beholding him properly. I gotta move off of here, even though I can stay here quite a bit. Anyhow, you need to find the one that God appoint over everything, that have control of everything. And the one, that one of the things you have that you are going to be held accountable. How you're managing the things in your life. Everything you're important. You, you, you manage it. Not something. Everything. Your clothes, your, how you believe, how you think, how you act, your family, your house, your resource, your time, your space. All of it. You need to find someone, first of all, with the exact image. And why you want that? Because 
I, the only thing you can truly pull from that's truly the fullness of you is your full being shit. Thanks to God. This God in which you will always be pulling for is the source and everything you give you or make you what you ought to be. And then, this is how do I manage all the things and then this being who I ought to be that he's put into my mind.